As I'm doing this podcast, there are riots all around the United States. People are getting very violent and they don't seem to listen to reason. But this isn't the first time that it's happened. I want to give you a biblical account that looks exactly like what's happening today and what happened as a result. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Headbangers brew. So folks, here's the question for today. Dear Pastor Bob, I've been trying to be the voice of reason to my friends on Facebook, but they won't listen. People seem to be like cattle headed to the slaughter. Isn't anyone using their brains anymore? <laughs> well, sometimes it seems like they're not, doesn't it? But you know, this is nothing new. People do this all the time. And a lot of times decisions are made and and uh, riots like this start with many times lack of information, lack of proper communication and mob rules, which is kind of what this is. There's a great quote that I've come back to many times from Thomas Paine. And he says, to argue with the person who has renounced the use of reason is like administering medicine to the dead. <laughs> they're not going to listen. And it's just, they're not listening to reason. And so when you're trying to be the voice of reason, sometimes it falls on deaf ears. Well, I want to go here today to the Bible. If you have it, take it out. You're going to want to do some underlining and remember where this is at. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 through 60. And that's where we're going today. And again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And he says, verse 51, you stiff-necked and stubborn people. Now, there's a statement. <laughs> And it's a statement we might use today. We might, <clears throat> excuse me, not use the exact same terms, but stubborn is one I would think of, and stiff-necked, all that it applies. People that have made up their minds and are feeling like they're superior before they've even considered maybe the truth of the matter. But Stephen has just given them all of the reasons they should have faith their forefathers, their, the prophets of old, all of this. He's just gone through all of this. And then he finishes it by saying, you stiff-necked and stubborn people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You are always actively resisting the Holy Spirit. You're doing just as your fathers did. Like father, like son. And then he goes on and he tells them, he said, here's what you're guilty of. Listen, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They did. They persecuted all of them. They killed those who proclaimed beforehand the coming of the righteous one. They killed them. Whose betrayers and murderers you have now become, even though the righteous one came and proved himself. Yeah. You who received the law as ordained and delivered to you by angels, yet you didn't obey it. And verse 54, he says, Now when they heard this accusation and understood its implication, they understood what he was saying to them. They were cut to the heart. Now, cut to the heart means that they had a very deep, reaction. Now, you and I would think that their reaction should be the voice of reason. <clears throat> Stephen has just outlined everything that's gone on. He's made some very valid points based on truth. Yeah. They were cut to the heart and, listen, they began grinding their teeth in rage at him. 
you know, when you get really upset, you just uh, like that. That's what they were doing. They were so angry. Their absolute response was rage. Voice of reason, right? But he, verse 55, being full of the Holy Spirit, speaking of Stephen, and led by him, led by the Spirit, being full of the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit, sometimes those things aren't mutually inclusive. Sometimes we're full of the Holy Spirit, but we're also full of it. We're full of the Holy Spirit, but we don't do anything with it. We don't move. But it says he was full of the Holy Spirit and he was led by him, gazed into the heaven and saw the glory, the great splendor and majesty of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Wow, what a thing to see. So God gave him a glimpse of heaven and Stephen says, look, I see heaven's opened up in welcome and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Well, they knew who the Son of Man was. He had just left. Jesus crucified, risen from the dead, and they knew it because Jesus walked among them for many days afterwards. All of this. They saw him ascend into heaven on a cloud. And the Bible says that some still doubt it, even though they're seeing him go up on a cloud. So again, you would think, okay, this is where they turn around and they go, okay, I'm listening to the voice of reason. Okay, I understand this is the truth. No, they still didn't. Verse 57. But they shouted with loud voices and covered their ears. You know, this is what little children do. You tell them something and they go, ah, I don't want to hear that. Ah. Yeah. Just like little children, they shouted with loud voices. They covered their ears and together, again, mob rules. One at a time may not have happened, but together, this is how mobs rule. They rushed at him considering him guilty of blasphemy. Really? And then they drove him out of the city and began stoning him to death, throwing stones at him. And the witnesses, listen, placed their outer robes at the feet of a young man named Saul who would later become Paul and write most of the New Testament. This is the guy God used to write most of the New Testament. Yeah, the guy that was condoning all of this happening. And they laid their robes in front of him because he was the ringleader. He was the mob leader. Wow. If there's ever a, a scripture that speaks of turnaround. Nobody was worse than Saul. And you know, when he went to the house of Ananias, Ananias knew who he was. He said, Lord, I know all about this guy and I know how much harm he's caused to the believers in Jerusalem and you want me to do what? Yeah. And then it says, and they continued stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, Receive and accept and welcome my spirit. Knew he was dying. Knew God was about to receive him. And then he says something that sounds a little bit familiar in verse 60, the last verse. Then falling on his knees in worship, as he's being stoned, as he's dying, he cried out loudly, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Do not charge them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep in death. Wow, what a guy, huh? Lord, don't hold this sin against them. The, first, the last thing he did before he entered heaven was to forgive them and ask God to forgive them. Wow. So does this sound like what's going on around us today? Yeah, it does. We have mob rules going on so many places. 
And you know, it's hard to reason with mob rules. And sometimes we try to do that. When you post something on social media, well, it's usually mob rules. Everybody will attack you at once. But when you sit with somebody face to face and you share your heart, you share your testimony, you share the gospel, the good news, you're able to share your heart with them and they're able to listen. That's when people change. That's when they begin to think for themselves. That's when they begin to have an aha moment. Oh, really? Wow, I never thought of that. And that's where that cloud that comes from mob rules begins to lift and they begin to see the glory of God. Folks, this is our role as a church. Not that we can change mobs, but that we can change individuals. And if you're sitting at home today and you're feeling like there's nothing you can do about all of this, you're wrong. Because people are one, one person at a time. It's awesome, isn't it? And you see, all of us have an opportunity to talk to somebody who is a victim of mob rules and simply needs truth. Yeah. Well, it's an important thing and we're not done talking about this. We have definite opportunities and responsibilities as Christians as we go out into a very damaged world after the coronavirus, after the riots, after one thing after another. And there's more ahead. There's more destruction ahead. There's more news ahead. But as we go through all of this, folks, God is still on the throne. Jesus is still the answer. And our testimony still counts. You are blessed. Go and be a blessing.